Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the admin panel or the back end of the software. Um, so let's dive in and immediately just go ahead and log into the system. So as soon as we log into the back end, you're going to see what looks like a Windows desktop. So just a quick few minutes on the design choice here. So we wanted to build something that anybody could use, even somebody with the most limited technical ability. So we based the whole design choice of the back end on a Windows desktop. So it looks and works and feels like a Windows desktop. And of course the reason for that is most people know how to work one of them. So the learning curve or the training or the, the onboarding process should be much less difficult than maybe it would be for an ERP system or one of the other competing web products. Um, so like a Windows desktop, if you want to access any of the functionality, you just go ahead and click Start. And from here, we shall start by having a quick look at the Customer Manager. So this is going to bring up a list of all the customers registered on the website. And from here, we can add a new customer by clicking on that button. We could import a whole bunch of customers if we got them on an Excel spreadsheet somewhere. Or we can click through on an existing customer ID to go into that record and do something with that customer. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and click through on the demo account. And um, when you first log into the customer record, you're going to get what we would call the static information for that user. So that would be things like default billing and shipping, when did they last log in, when did they last place an order, what's the telephone number, all that kind of stuff. At this point, there's some nice customization you can do. So for example, you could upload this customer's logo. And what does that mean? Well, it means when they log in, Instead of your store logo, it's going to replace that with the customer's logo. So there's a nice little bit of personalization there at the customer level. Um, if you need to go and visit this customer, we can show you a nice map, tell you where they are. But the real takeaway on this page, the thing to notice, is that from this one screen, you can do anything that you would ever need to do with this customer. So for example, if you wanted to see the orders they've placed in the past, you click on the Orders tab. If you want to manage their ship to addresses, then you click on the Address tab. If you want to manage the users within this company, then you click on the Users tab. Um, if you want to set up any rewards points or a reward program for this customer, then you click on the Rewards tab. So you are literally just clicking through these tabs to do anything that you would ever need to do for this customer, all available from one screen. Um, next up, we need to have a quick look at the pricing, how you price the web store. Um, this one's quite complex, so I'm going to keep it for the sake of this demo at a high level because it does go very deep. Um, so we there's basically three different ways to price the website. Uh, the first way is customer contracts and deals. That's where you click through on a customer and you give that customer some pricing that's unique to them, driven by their login. So that's customer contracts and deals. Next one up is global contracts. So global contracts is where you can um, price the storefront so you could think about global pricing as the price that anybody's going to see when they find the website. You know, maybe they click through from Google or something like that. So the price that anybody's going to see when they find the site and get unless there's something in their account that says different. Okay, so that's global. And obviously customer pricing overrides global pricing. And the next one up is group pricing. So group contracts is where you can create one pricing structure and then attach that to, I don't know, a thousand different customers. No limit really to the number of customers that you can then attach to that pricing structure. Now, regardless of which one you're in, whether it's customer, global or group, then the tools to price are exactly the same. So just to give you a flavor for what can be done here, let me go ahead and do the pricing for the demo account. So again, we click through on the customer ID. Uh, we go ahead and click through on the contract ID for that customer. Um, that's going to show us the contract information. Contracts are pretty straightforward. They have a name. just needs to make sense to you guys. 
they have a priority number and they have a date range and once those things are filled in it's going to expose this bar, this silver bar along the top here and that contains all the tools that you can use to price this customer's account. So let's look at the the most obvious one which would be item pricing or what some guys call contract pricing. So that's really simple, that's where you say this customer buys item code ABC123 at a fixed price or a discount markup or margin but let's say a fixed price of 15 bucks. Click save so it's code, price and add. Alternatively of course we don't make you type that stuff and you could add that through an import through an Excel spreadsheet. It's a very very simple file format. It's just item code in column A price in column B, discount method in column C. So very very simple format. So that would be your sort of contract pricing for a customer. Code, price and add. Simple. Next up is what we call band pricing and band pricing would be the ability to do a global discount uh, markup or margin across all products in the store. So let me give you an example. Right, If you said on band A products and that would cover all items. I want to do a discount off list for this customer of 20%. Okay, click save, and that's applied to all products for this customer. So we've just discounted all items by 20%. Next one up is what we call classification pricing or pricing by category. So we can start to get more granular here. And that's where you could do uh, something like on abrasives and all the subcategories underneath that for the for the items in those categories then I want to make 28% uh, margin and that will, of course will be a margin on cost that we select from the discount method and I want that to apply to the NASCO products click save and boom you're gonna make a 28% margin on all the products in those categories so that's pricing by category Next one up is brand, so you've got exactly the same tools and controls at the brand level. So you could say, I want to make, you know, 25 on Dewalt, 18 on 3M. So you can set your margins at the individual brand level. And then the last one I want to talk about here is quantity breaks, or multi-buys as some people call them. So that's where you say, this guy can buy item code ABC123 at 29 bucks, but he needs to buy 100 okay so you set the the price and then the quantity required in order for the customer to get that price and of course that's going to show up on the front end as a quantity break or a multi buy price so that's pretty much it on pricing um, again for the top level that's fine it goes much deeper in terms of how all these different levels interact with each other and needless to say there's tons of control available for you um, within the price and structure of the website um, coming to the end of this now guys so the last thing or the second last thing we're going to look at here is the product manager so the site is going to come delivered to you or the dealer preloaded with all the ORS NASCO e-content and I think there's something like 70,000 items in the store in that e-content file um, and we are going to keep that up to date. You don't need to do anything to make that happen. So on the first day of the new quarter, you wake up and all the content on the site is nice and fresh. And it happened while you were in bed sleeping and you didn't have to do anything to make that piece happen. But you aren't just restricted, of course, to just the NASCO products. We realize that that's not a practical solution. So you are free to add in what we would call your own products. So your own products would be anything that isn't ORS NASCO. And of course there's imports and templates and spreadsheets that allow you to do that. To add those products to the site. Um, just segueing slightly, you can also have full control over the category structure. So if you were going to add a new product and there wasn't a category on the site that was um, appropriate for that item then you have the tools to go and add that additional category. So full control over category structure and own products. Um, you can deactivate certain brands within the system that you don't want to sell and have them disappear off the website and you can prioritize um, certain brands within the system. And that will make those brands bubble up to the top when people are drilling down through the website. 
Um, that's pretty much it on products. I want to finish on sales and marketing. So, the stuff we've looked at so far is how you're going to manage customers and set up pricing and take orders and do all that kind of stuff. But we're going to finish on a part of the system that might help you get the next new customer. So right at the start of the conversation, I told you that you could manage um, things like um, the banner content on the website. So again, if you haven't seen that part, then go and review the first video, the storefront video. So things like this summer sale banner, for example, let's say you wanted to change that to something else. Well, the way to do that would be to go to the back end, click on the sales and market manager from the start menu, and under the banner management tab, we want to go ahead and click through on summer sale. So this is going to show us the, um, first of all, the banner name, its priority, and I'll come back to that in a second, and the date range for this banner. Now it's really cool that each banner's got a date range, and I'll tell you why that's important. Because you could technically set up a whole quarter, or a whole year's worth of banners in advance. And providing you've got the start and the end date synced properly, then the old banners will fade out as the new banners are fading in. So that's why it's really, really important that each banner's date sensitive. Then we flip to the image tab and that's going to show us the content that currently occupies that space. Now if we wanted to change that content then we would just click on the browse button, navigate to the new banner file and save that and that would replace that content. And just to be clear that new banner could be a standard image file, something like a JPEG or a PNG file, a GIF, any standard image format. Or it could also be flash, so it could be a flash banner as well. And flash banners tend to be, it's not the right word, but they're a little bit sexier with the transitions and the fade-ins and the fade-outs. They just look nicer, so you've got support for both types, standard image and flash. Um, then we've got the location tab, so that's how we get the banner up onto the system, but now we need to decide where that's going to show up. So that's handled under the location tab. So is that going to show up in the center column, the left column, or the right column? Well, in this case, we'll say the center column, and it's priority one. So this priority number works in conjunction with the location tab to decide where that banner is going to show up. So center column, priority one, is going to be the first banner in the center column. Obviously, the one underneath that would be two, and the one underneath that would be three, and so on and so forth. So that's how you position things on the website here. The next thing um, we need to look at is how you take that whole banner management concept and push those banners into the website. So for example, you can add banners to things like category pages. So if we said, okay, let's make sure that when people are drilling down through the abrasives categories, then that banner content gets displayed. So if you, if you want to see how that translates on the front end, then we come back to the front end, we click on abrasives, it's going to show us the subcategories underneath that, but it's going to push the banner content right to the top because that's what we asked the system to do. And then when we click through on some products, again, it's going to show us those products, but again, push that banner content right to the top of those product results because that's what we asked the system to do. So that's how you take these banners and you can push them into the system. The um, last option here would be things like keywords. Um, so you could set a keyword of DeWalt Drill. Click on Save. Like I said in the first video, right at the start, if somebody searches for DeWalt Drill, it's going to bring back the normal search results for that type of search. But above those, it's going to push your banner content. So think about that for a second. You've probably got 8 to 10 banner positions on the home page thousands of potential categories that you can add banner content to and tens or maybe hundreds of thousands of search phrases that people might use to find products on the website where you can control the banner content. So there's huge, huge possibility and scope for doing merchandising and marketing on the website. Now, the last thing I'm going to finish on here, guys, in this section is the... Um, We've looked at how you position banners, we've looked at how they show up on the site and how you can drive them into the website. But the next thing we need to look at is what happens when somebody clicks through on the banner. 
So for example, you could link them to a URL somewhere on the website. So it could be a product page or a category page. That would make sense. Or, and what we would recommend is you could build a custom page behind this banner that was absolutely relevant and unique to the content that was being promoted. So this is how you would do it. You would use the text editor to build what we would call the header information for that page. So again, let's say this was a promotion on DeWalt. Then you could tell the customer everything they need to know about DeWalt, and why it's good and the quality and all that other stuff. And you could use the text editor to do that. But of course, underneath that, you're going to want to have some products. So you might want to have five products, ten products, fifteen products. Well, to make those products show up, all you have to do is type the item codes. So you would type 15 item codes, click save, and the system's going to do everything else. And the end result is you're going to have this super custom landing page that's absolutely unique to the promotion that was being offered. And it took you 15 minutes to build it instead of 15 hours if you just had one of these HTML editors. The system does all the heavy lifting. And of course, if you take that landing page metaphor, that whole custom landing page metaphor, you aren't just restricted to banners because there's going to be a whole bunch of marketing activity that you do on the website where you're going to need to bring people back onto one of these landing pages. So email's a good example. You know, you want to send a, an email campaign to the customers. Same thing applies when you bring them onto the website. You want to bring them onto a nice, relevant custom landing page that was unique to the email that was being sent. And the whole point in these landing pages is we want to drive up the conversion, drive up the conversion rate of these email and marketing campaigns that you do on the website. So, um, last thing I want to mention here, guys, is coupon codes. Coupon codes just work brilliantly for the people who use them. I'm going to give you an example of how this works. So let's add a coupon code. So I could say if the customer adds the code SAVE to the coupon code field in the shopping cart, we're going to give them a 10% discount. Okay? So the coupon amount would be 10 the method could be percentage value or dollar value, so we'll say percentage. Can the customer use it more than once, yes or no? We then set a date range for the coupon, and most importantly, an order value where that's going to work. Because we don't want to give people discounts on little 30 40 $50 orders. We want to get a decent order value in return for the discount. So we could say something like... This is only going to work when you've added 250 bucks um, to the shopping cart. Okay? We go ahead and click save. Um, I guess at this point you could email your customers and say, Hi guys, log in today. Put code save in the shopping cart to get 10% off on orders above 250 bucks. Expires midnight. And that is a fantastic way of getting customers to buy stuff when you need them to buy stuff not when they want to buy stuff. So coupon codes are great and they work brilliantly for the guys who use them. Um, very, very effective. So that kind of brings us to the end of the video. Um, gives you a quick overview of some of the functionality available in Evolution. I hope that was helpful and we'll see you soon. Thanks.